people that are that are more progressive tend to be more interested in what people's motives are. And uh, they think that the motives of business are bad motives, that because they think business is motivated by selfishness or greed, and that they are doing things just to make money. So they, the, the, the business person gets put in this box, it's all about the money. And it's not all about the money, but it's partly about the money because unless business can make a profit, it's going to fail, and then the jobs are going to disappear, and the customers are going to go away, and so business has to make money. But, you know, as Ed Freeman said it, and I, I like his metaphor a lot, he says, look, my body has to produce red blood cells or I'll die. It doesn't follow that the reason I exist is to produce red blood cells. That's not my purpose. Business has to make profits or it dies, but it doesn't mean that's why business exists to make profits. But then we have this different standard we apply to other things. Like, let's, let's take doctors. Yeah. Doctors are very well paid. They make a lot of money. But we don't hear it about doctors being, you know, they're, they're motivated by greed and selfishness. No, doctors are trying to heal people. Their purpose is to heal people, right? Help people be healthier. Purpose of teachers is to educate. The purpose of um, architects design things, engineers construct things. They're all about the value creation that they're doing for other people. And ironically, business people are the greatest value creators, and yet they're put in this box that nobody else is put in that it's just about the money. And it's a slanderous. It's not true. Business has to make money, but that's not what it's primarily about. It's about creating value for customers. And then in voluntary exchange, if you do a good job, then you'll be rewarded and you may be able to make some profits, but that's not guaranteed either. I'm reminded of something I heard in the middle of uh, early in COVID. So a friend of mine was involved in working with the state little coalition of people that were brought together to try to be like, what, what are we going to do about COVID early on? And he told me that um, the CEO of the Dell Seton Hospital System was lamenting that we have this free market healthcare system and that that's the problem with uh, how we can try to deal with COVID because we have this free market healthcare system. I believe he makes $3 million a year. <laughs> I only have to just tell you one thing to prove we're not in a free market healthcare system. If you break your arm and you go to the doctor, do they show your price list? No. This is what I charge to fix a broken arm. You can go You can go north to the Oklahoma Surgery Center, that's it. Otherwise, if you go to your local hospital, nobody, nobody there seems to know. Imagine, <laughs> imagine if, we, if I can only run Whole Foods that way. No price is posted. Just, you know, listen, just come on up and we're gonna bill your grocery insurance company. And uh, so don't worry about it. That somebody else is paying for it. What do you think would happen to the prices? This um, they go up, and that's and that's the problem. We do not have a free market healthcare system. In fact, our healthcare system is arguably the most regulated part of our entire economy, except for perhaps education. And where America gets the worst outcomes are the sections of our society that are the most regulated, which is healthcare and education, and we fall far behind other countries in those areas. 